Warning. This program may contain material of an explicit or graphic nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Broadcasting Undead from the B-Ward. This is Postmortem. I'm Dom. I'm JD. And it's episode three. It's number three. Time flies when you're talking about some fucked up shit. Yeah, that means it's a pattern. Because once is an occurrence, twice is a repetition, and three times is a pattern. We're a fucking pattern, everybody. Yeah. Yeah! Postmortem, coming back. We're not going anywhere. This episode, we have the top five... Decapitate. Oh, wait. No, that was last no, show. No, wait. That was last show. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so used to saying top five decapitation. Yeah, you were saying it for like a week, so. Okay, yeah. so 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 what is it? Because I might be a little confused. Top five masks that you can't buy at Party City. Yeah. No Party City, no Halloween Express, no fucking back of a catalog or online websites. We're talking about unique masks for movies that are more obscure. We're not talking about Jason. We're not talking about Leatherface. We're not talking about no fucking undead William Shatner. Nope. Not some it's something that if you want it, you would probably have to like make it or commission someone to make it. For yeah, you. and and some of these masks you may find in the deepest, darkest recesses of online sales, right. and that's okay. Amazon. Yeah, things like that. Etsy. Yeah. Etsy. Etsy. As a matter of fact, one of my masks I know is on Etsy because I know the person who made it and put it on there. That's awesome. All right. So no more decapitations. I we're am an idiot. The head, we're taking the severed head and we're shoving it into a mask. You know, as, as you know, but the people listening don't know, it's been a rough couple days for me. Yeah, you got a dog. I got a puppy yesterday, so that means I had two hours of sleep. I woke up this morning to go out to my car to go to work, and my passenger side window was broken, and my iPad was gone. Hey. So that's great, and that's what I used to work. You live in the burbs. like that's Yeah, it's not even a bad area, you know, but fuck. Yeah, so it's been a rough couple days for me. So if I stumble a little bit, if I sound like a complete jackass, then that's just what you're going to have to get used to, because that's going to be each and every episode here at Postmortem. Yeah, yeah, and you're always going to sound like a jackass every episode. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're supposed to defend me. <laughs> All right, so as we always start, some horror news. news. I have a good piece of news. Have you heard about Baskin? I, I have not. Baskin. From Turkey. Is it spelled like Baskin Robbins? It is exactly like okay. Baskin Robbins. A film from Turkey. You know, some of the foreign horror movies have been the best of the last 10 years. Except for The Turkish Exorcist. I that did was, not see that. You, you should look it up on YouTube. I do not wish to do that. <laughs> uh, but you know, you talk about Serbian film, you talk about martyrs inside, you have so much good shit coming out of left field. Yep. So uh, Turkey's stepping in, putting their two cents in with this film Baskin. Uh, Baskin means police raid in Turkish is that what they speak Turkish yeah that's, okay that's funny so like Baskin Robbins is, is like police raid Robbins for ice <laughs> yeah for ice cream ready for ice cream so Baskin is the story of a police raid that's gone wrong oh it's gone really really wrong you have five cops going out to a creepy backwater town after responding to a mysterious radio call for backup they stumble into a nightmare you've got to watch the trailer on this fucker yeah. Yes, it is awesome. You, after we're done here, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna show it to you okay. because it is great. It's very gory and extremely creepy. Awesome. We'll the put it in the uh, uh, the comments under the. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Well, yeah, we'll post in the comments. So if you guys haven't heard of Baskin yet, uh, you can check it out. It's kind of like a combination to me of Hellraiser, the first Hellraiser, and Silent Hill. It's that, got a. That's a big sales point for me. Yeah, very gory. It's got that. And it, you ever see that movie, The Cell? Yeah. It's very underrated, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. You know the imagery in that movie? Well, the, let me talk about The Cell for a second. All right. Uh, Tarsum Singh, 
is a great director at stealing things from other people. Everything in the cell came from photography and video work by Mark Romanek and uh, Floria Sigismondi, who were doing all of the Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson videos in the 1990s. Yeah. And they did all this, both of them did this crazy photography work, and Tarsum took all their shit, co-opted it, and put it in the cell. It's still pretty good, though. Yeah, it's pretty. pretty but... So if you like that, if you like Hellraiser, if you like Silent Hill, and it's probably more like a, you know, it's got that European modern-day extreme horror feel to it, too. Okay. So it's like... Hellraiser, Silent Hill, and a Serbian film all wrapped into one. Nice. So, something like that. You know, I didn't see any uh, newborn... <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Newborn porn. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this movie, Baskin. You guys check it all out in the comments. Dom, you need to see it. So, I haven't been this excited for a horror movie in years. Awesome. So, What's your uh, first piece of horror news there? I want to talk about the Ghostbusters trailer oh, that God. just came out. Ah! No! I love Ghostbusters. Me the, too. The original one. I love Ghostbusters I too. I watch it probably once a month with my yeah, daughter. Yeah, she always says, yeah, she always Can I watch watches. Ghostbusters? Yeah. 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 I, I, I have like a, a yearly, like usually in early October, I'll kick my horror movie marathon off with Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. I love Ghostbusters. This new Ghostbusters, I'm not pissed off that it's an all-female cast. And frankly, no, me neither. That's if fine. you're pissed off that it's an all-female cast, punch yourself in the face because you're a fucking idiot. No, in the dick. Punch, punch yourself in even, the even if you don't have a dick. Yeah. Punch yourself in the genitals. Yeah. Repeatedly until you accept the fact that you're a fucking moron and get over that aspect. Yeah. What I'm upset about is that it's not funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset because it looks like it's gonna suck. Yeah. Not because it's girls. That's yeah. fine. That that like exorcist throwback joke where she's like, the power of Patty compels you. I, you know around. what? I saw the trailer. I deleted it from my brain. Yeah. I remember nothing at all. Nothing. I can't even recall one thing that happens in the trailer. Yeah. That's how much I didn't like it. But the thing that I'm curious about on it is when they were putting the movie together, early on, Paul Feig, the director, said that it's going to be a complete hard reboot. But in the beginning of the trailer, it says 30 years ago, four scientists saved New York City from a paranormal event. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a remake. Yeah. Uh, but it's not. It's like a sequel. I, I guess. Which, I it, that yeah. I prefer that to the uh, remake. You know how I oh, feel about the remakes? Absolutely. But, does not look good. Yeah, I, I just, I just hope that they're saving all the good stuff for the movie. I'm still gonna see it because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> that's uh, a, that's one of our catchphrases <laughs> on the show. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. So we'll see. But I, uh, I'm a little bit shrinky inside about it. All right. Well, have you heard of skin your skunk? <laughs> Is that a euphemism for masturbating? Uh, that's what I thought at first when I saw it. But yes. <laughs> Don't skin your skunk or you're going to go blind, boy. You're going to go blind. Hairy palms. Hairy stinky palms. <laughs> yeah. Skin Your Skunk is a company. It's uh, skinyourskunk.com. They're coming out with, and they have a lot of, but the new one they're coming out with that made me check out this company, they make guitar wraps, like decal, decals for guitars, that they make to custom fit any shape of guitar. So you tell them what guitar you have. They get the dimensions, they print the decal. That's awesome. They're coming out with official Hellraiser guitar wraps. Wow. All of them are based on the puzzle box. Okay. Cut to fit your guitar. They have three types and styles. One of them is the Hellraiser, the traditional box, just the, the box in different, you know, the golden box in different uh, ways all across your guitar. Yeah. Then you have the Cenobite, which is like a lighter brown version of the box. It kind of looks older, like maybe it's the plans for the box and not uh, the actual golden box when it's completed. And then you have Leviathan. Leviathan. It's red and gray of the box as well. All okay. of it is the box. So just different color schemes. And it's not the same exact art with the different color schemes. Right. It's different art, but they're all based on the box. Uh, I clicked on the website and started looking at that. Then I realized that this company makes a lot of different stuff. Okay. They have a bunch of horror skins. They have Dead Snow skins. Nice. <laughs> yeah. They have zombies. They have Cthulhu guitar wraps, dude. I knew you would be into it. My, my, you can't see this because we're on the podcast, but my eyes just got massive. They, they I, did. I have a, uh, I have a custom uh, uh, BC Rich VG1 Virgin that's been customized into a tenor guitar like Max Cavalera from Sepultura plays, so it's like really just boomy and loud. Yeah. It's the four bottom strings. I actually, I got it the day I got married and got it done customized a few days after I got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just plain black, and now I want to put a Cthulhu skin on it. Dude, awesome. That's amazing. I don't know how much all the different skins run, uh -huh. 
the Hellraiser series are 75 a piece, which is pretty awesome if it's cut to fit your guitar. Yeah, yeah, for so, sure. Uh, the other ones that I took notice of that I really like, they have H.R. Geiger style biomechanical skins. I've seen guitars that are like that. I wonder yeah, if they made those. I don't know. They, they, I don't think they make actual guitars. They make more right. of a sticker. Right. So, uh, and then some horror posters and stuff, different movies. Uh, like we said, we're going to talk about all things horror, disturbing, or extreme. It might not be a movie. Last week, Dom talked about a game. I'm, I'm talking talk about, about some game fucking today. guitars. <laughs> <laughs> guitar stickers and don't talking about another game so that's that's awesome i it's called skin your skunk uh yeah skin your skunk.com okay yeah check it out everybody uh hopefully we can get them to be a sponsor with That'd this awesome. ringing endorsement yeah <laughs> all right so you got anything else for horror news yeah i want to talk about stephen king again okay uh have you heard that the dark tower is underway yes i have it's finally under production um Interesting choices. They've got Matthew McConaughey playing the Man in Black, which I would have rolled my eyes at had True Detective not come out. I think he's going to be able to play that part well. I love Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. He after, is hit or miss, though. Yeah. But after True Detective, I have absolute faith that he can play that character. <laughs> you, know, you know what my favorite Matthew McConaughey role is? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> probably <laughs> mine, too. Pro after True Detective, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, awesome. yeah. Um, but the interesting thing is the gunslinger, Roland Deschain, is going to be played by Idris Elba. They made oh, from Beast with No Nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. actor. He's great. Yeah, yeah. that's a great and movie, Beast with No Nation. It's not a uh, horror movie, but it may as well be. It's fucking yeah. horrific. It's, it's <laughs> great, and it, it will make you feel something. Yeah, so. and and he's an extremely powerful actor. Don't care that they're taking a white character and making him black. I'm, I like that. Yeah, I'm only curious if they're going to give him contact lenses because all through the books they talk about Roland's quote blue bombardier's eyes. It will probably make him stand out more. Yeah. You know, if yeah. he's black with blue eyes, yeah. make him more of a, like a striking character. I, I do hope they keep that. The only thing that I'm kind of uh about is they're releasing the story out of sequence. They're not starting with the gunslinger. I have read one of those books, and I can't even remember which one. Okay. I haven't even read the whole, uh, what is it? It's not a trilogy. It's, just, it's more it's than that, that, right? I think it's six. six? Five or six. Five or six, yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've read them all. They're excellent, and if you're a Stephen King fan, they tie a lot of his worlds together. Like the the uh, Reverend from uh, Salem's Lot is, okay. is in this I book. I love Salem's Lot. Um, yeah. The thing that it is, is something that they're dealing with throughout the entire story, like his race. Okay. Um, and so it, a lot of Stephen King books are all tied out in this into this web, and I'll be curious to see how they touch on that too, because so many different studios own the rights to different books. I'm wondering if they're going to kind of rein that in a little bit. Um, they've even got Shiners from The Shining in in, uh, oh, wow. in the story. Um, all, all of his books are tied together in it. So having it be out of sequence, I'm going to be kind of I'm kind of. Are you looking about. forward to it, or if they fuck it up, I'm going to be real mad. <laughs> uh, well, but I'm going to give it a chance. Something that you're not going to be real mad about. You know, you brought up Stephen King mm -hmm. on the first podcast. One of the first pieces of horror news that we talked about was Stephen King's It, which right. led to my suggestion. Of Doug of Jones, Doug Jones to play it. The Dude. The Dude Master. Anyways, it progressed to later in the episode, it all tied in back to Doug Jones. The second episode came back to Doug Jones with the ratings. With the, yes, with the Doug Jones with the heart on the face as the icon of yep. the. <laughs> yeah. It was our love yeah. letter to him. Yeah, our love letter to Doug Jones. Well, interestingly enough, Mr. Doug Jones himself. Has endorsed this podcast. He has. He has. He went on there. I shared it to his Facebook wall that episode. He listened to the whole thing because he brought up several things. Yep. He brought up the rating system. He brought up the Doug Jones rating system and he really liked that. Yep. And we said a love, a love letter to Doug Jones and he said, I just might have fallen in love with Dom and JD. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Doug Jones loves us. Doug Jones loves us. And if you don't, fuck you. Yeah. You're wrong. Yeah, and I've never heard Doug Jones be wrong about anything, so. <laughs> All right, and that is it for today's horror news. We're going to come back with the bad movie and the good movie That's right. of the week. And then? And then, top five. I mean, I mean, mass, mass, it's mass, yes. And if you say Jim Carrey, I'll beat the living shit out of you. Uh, that was a horrible movie. But it wasn't a horrible <laughs> Not a horror movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back right after this. Hi, thanks for listening to the Postmortem Podcast. If you want to support us, go to our website at www.postmortemshow.com and click the Amazon link. By clicking on the Amazon banner, 
Amazon will give a small percentage of the purchase price of your item back to the Postmortem Podcast at no additional cost to you. That's right. It doesn't cost you any money. We get money. You want us to keep doing this? You want more Doug Jones talk? You want more dick and fart talk? I don't care. We're going to do it. Fund our filthy, filthy habits. Yes, and you, they are many, and they are vast. And most of them aren't legal. <laughs> Come on, don't be a dick. Give us money. Okay, we are back to the show. After that quick word from our sponsors, the people they got to do that commercial are really fucking unprofessional. I was just going to say they're very professional. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. Ah! Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, we have the bad movie and the good movie of the week. Yes. Fire so, it off. You want me to start or yeah. you want to start? Okay. My bad movie, I will just say this. The first quarter of it, this is going to be my bad movie of the week. I just, I had that feeling when I was watching it, right? The middle, uh, it's not that bad. The, by the end, like the last quarter, I'm like, ah, uh, this is okay. It wasn't terrible. But it's not as good as my good movie of the week. So that's why it's the bad movie of the week. Okay. If, if I'm going to compare, this is the bad one. So. It's called Some Kind of Hate. You watch this fucker? No, I saw it on Netflix, but I haven't it's watched on it Netflix. yet. It, it's rated at 4... Uh, IMDb, it's rated 4.6. Okay. Netflix, it's 2 out of 5. Okay. Directed by Adam Egypt Mortimer. Egypt Mortimer? Yeah. Adam Egypt... Sounds like someone's Egypt. LARP character. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is LARP? It's... <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> I'm just laughing about it. I have no idea what the fuck it is. Is it like a more advanced uh, form of carp? Like... Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's like a fish. That, it's like a carp with legs. Yeah, yeah. And, and it hits you with a, a foam stick. <laughs> All right. So, a bully teenager is sent off to reform school where he accidentally summons the spirit of a dead girl who was herself bullied. Oh. And guess what she does? She helps him get his revenge. Wow. That's the IMDb uh, description. A little bit customized, but pretty much the synopsis. So I gave this fucker a chance because the name was based on a Misfits song, as far as I can tell, some kind of hate by yeah. the Misfits, which is one of my top bands. It was my favorite band when I was younger, and still love them. So, and my character in wrestling is based on the Misfits. So. Right. I said I'm going to give it a chance, based on a Misfits song. It's two out of five on Netflix, which is not a good indication. No. But I was bored. I was sitting there waiting for the insurance company to call me back. Waiting for the fucking cops to get to my house to file a report because I needed a fucking report to submit to the insurance company to fix my fucking window that some jackass broke in the middle of the night and took my fucking iPad that I needed for work so I had to call in sick and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing and I was bored. So I watched some kind of hate. <laughs> I just want to say this. That's an epic story right there. I wish a spirit of a dead girl would come back and help me get revenge on the fucker that broke my window. Yeah, maybe the spirit of your window would come back. And the way the guy did it, he said, I just want them to die. I just want them to die. I just want them to die. So I'm going to say right now, a little fucking dead girl with the razors on the necklace around her head. I just want them to fucking die. Die! Okay. So, I'm so sorry. Went off on a little tangent there. So, so it's a bad movie with an anti-bullying message. It is a bad movie with an anti-bullying message, yes. Okay. But she gets a little out of hand and he wants her to stop. Huh? Okay. When it comes down to it, you know. So, and she opens Pandora's she box and stop. can't control yeah, she it. Won't stop. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the bullying in this movie is very stereotypical and way over the top and badly acted. Okay. Especially at the beginning sequence before. So he goes to a, like a reform hippie camp. It's not a reform school as much as it's like a fucking hippie camp. Find yourself and all this bullshit, you know. So he goes. The guy's name is Lincoln. He goes to school. Starts getting slapped around by this jock character that's like an 80s jock that can't act, basically. Okay. Like a John Hughes Sla jock? Or... Slapped around and getting called fag tag. What the fuck is a fag tag? You know, this movie is full of homophobic references, but they're always by characters that have a, like a homosexual vibe themselves. Like okay. the things that they do. So like real life. Yeah, basically okay. like, oh, you're, you're, you're gay. I'm going to beat you up because I'm gay and I don't want anybody to know. Right. I don't want anybody to know. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So, he slaps him around. He throws milk on him and says, oh, you just came all over yourself. Wow. Yeah. So, this guy had had enough. I guess it had been years in the storyline at this point. He grabs a fork and stabs this guy in the face. 
Okay. The bully. It's reasonable. Which was, you know, a mild smattering of applause from the audience of one, which was me when I'm sitting there bored waiting for the fucking insurance company to call me back about my fucking window. Dicks. Yes. So it gets sent off to hippie camp. Kids at camp think they're badass. It's like prison. At hippie camp, it's like prison. It's a system. They gotta test you at the hippie camp. Oh, you gotta, you gotta like pick a fight with the biggest dog yeah. in the yard. And yeah. Stuff. You, oh, you stab someone with a fork. You think you're bad? We're just gonna push you around a little bit, right? Kids at the camp, stereotypical bullies. There's like a black jock kind of guy. There's a white guy who's like his best friend that has a big iron cross on the side of his neck, and he's kind of like a Nazi, but he's hanging out with the black guy the whole movie. I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. So everyone is a cliche. Uh, Kids are calling him fag and all that stuff. Same homophobic slurs. Is, is the kid he's gay? Like, no, he's not. He's a metalhead. Okay. He's got long, black, straight hair, and he listens to heavy metal, and he kind of looks like a Columbine kid. Okay, so this is probably written by someone who went to high school in the 90s. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I had long hair in high school, and I got called a fag for it, too. Because apparently <laughs> long hair means you're attracted to people of the same sex. It wouldn't, I, but... The, what about the, the dicks that you... Never mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't the dicks I was like. Yeah, 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 it was the hair. Like yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, anyways, there's a lot of homosexual undertones in the bullying. They At one point, they pull his pants down and take pictures of his ass. Is this written by the guy who wrote Nightmare on Elm Street 2? <laughs> I don't know. Is Adam Egypt Mortimer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. I, I doubt it, so... Anyways, uh, he wishes they all die, and then this chick who looks a lot like the girl from the basement of the Evil Dead remake, you know how she's got that look on her face where she's wearing that, her eyes look a certain way, yeah. and it's almost like they directly saw that, and they're like, we're going to do that in a different way, but let's make her look like this, you know, it's like the Nicolas Cage face. Yeah, she's got a, a, a necklace full of razor blades, she uses the razor blades and other objects to inflict self-harm on herself, and what she does to herself happens to the bullies. So, which is kind of a cool concept. That's unique. It is not executed very well. Right. Uh, she starts killing them by, one by one. Um, the plus of this movie uh, is there's a really hot girl that's like his love interest, kind of, but no nudity at all. So that took it down a little bit. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a basic stereotypical premise. It's lacking in the brutality to me. It is not gory enough. I mean, there's a couple things, but when you're good, gore is like a throat being slit. You know, one person gets hit in the head by an object. Uh, it's that's what wasn't that great. There's, like I said, towards PG-13? the end, um, I don't know. I think it's R. Oh. I, I'm not really sure, but towards the end, it got a little bit better, but it wasn't my cup of tea. So that's my bad movie of the week. Okay. And and IMDb had given it a four point six. Netflix two out of five. Because I kind of liked it near the end, I'm gonna give it a five. five. What's our rating system? Our rating system is. Demonically possessed goats. Demonically possessed goats. Yes, that's like you, a Dominic creating. <laughs> it came out of Dominic's mouth. <laughs> okay. All right. How about no? Fuck the demonically possessed goats. That's so stereotypical. That's right where you're gonna go. How about tortured assholes who break windows and take iPads? I like that better. Five tortured assholes who break windows and take iPads. Tortured that's by right. demonically possessed goats. Yes. Five fucking assholes who break a fucking window, take your fucking iPad that you need to work. And you can't even drive because your window's broken. And you have to wait for the fucking insurance. You have to wait for the cops. And then they get tortured by goats. Demonic goats. Right. Yeah. Five of those. Okay. That's what we're going with for this reason. Five of those assholes. Yeah. So what's your bad movie of the week? My bad movie is also on Netflix. It holds the coveted one star rating and has a 3.5 on IMDb. All right. And it's called The Hollow. I saw the ad on Netflix. Yeah. I have been debating whether to subject myself to that. And I have been putting it off because I looked at it and I looked at it. Movies that have a, a really... They all look... The uh, cover of the movie all look the same for this certain type of movie. Uh -huh. It's a low-budget horror movie. It's not that good. They put a lot of money into the graphic, but right. it always looks not good enough. It looks like Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah, it looks like Sci-Fi Channel. To yes. where, yeah the, yeah, the graphic looks way better than the movie, but a real movie, like a really good movie, the poster doesn't have to be some fucking... Overly done. They're right. overcompensating. Well, that's well, like when you drive a giant monster truck because you have a three-inch penis. Yeah, that's well, what they're doing with these movie movie posters. To me, what what the the thing on the cover of the Hollow looks like and the monster in the movie, it looks like uh, Moltar from Space Ghost when he's not in his like costume and he's just the molten man. Have you seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Yeah, I'm actually rewatching it right now. You know the the aliens? Yeah. You know that have the spikes on them. And stuff? Yeah, that's what it reminded me. Yeah, of. It, like one of those, but on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing that got me to watch the movie is that uh, Deborah Kara Unger is, was listed in the cast. And she was uh, Dahlia in the Silent Hill movie. 
Okay. And has been in a couple other horror movies and is a very good actress. Um, and has this kind of weird, like, cougar milk quality about her. So yeah. I was like, Love all right, the milk. I'm going to check it out. She was in the first ten minutes of the movie and then you never see her. Again. I fucking hate that shit. And they list somebody that's not in the yeah. fucking movie. And that's what, what those movies do. They have the they have the budget for the special effects. They have the movie for someone famous to be in it for ten minutes. It's usually like Lance Heinrichson or something. Yeah. Because that guy will fucking do anything. Danny Trejo starts yeah. in. And then, and then he's gone, and the rest of it is just bullshit. There was, like, some sisters who lost their parents going to visit their aunt, but the town is cursed on Halloween, bad shit happens, there's a little girl who's maybe psychic, it's just all, like, these horror movie tropes thrown into one cluster oh, I hate of, it. of nothing happening. Ah! Oh. And they try to do, like, the rainy cam that, like, runs through the forest roaring, and it's poorly executed. Oh, God. You can't do that shit if you're not going to do no, it right. No. I, I'll just say, you can't do that shit. Unless you can't you're do Sam Raimi. Yeah, if you're Sam Raimi... Do it. Yeah. If you're not, stop fucking pretending. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to give that one to assholes who break windows and are tortured by demonically possessed ghosts. Assholes who break fucking windows and take your fucking iPad and you have to wait for the fucking shirts. You don't have to wait for the fucking pigs to get there and you have to deal with the fucking pigs. And then you have to do it over and over in my fucking nightmares. <laughs> it took them like three hours to show up, right? The cops? Yeah. I called them at 7.30 a.m. They got there at noon. You should have told them you were a white woman. <laughs> I'm a white woman being raped. <laughs> hey, there's people smoking weed outside of my house. Oh, we'll be right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Good movies. Good movies. God, I need to cleanse my palate after all this fucking negativity today. With a good movie. And I did. I watched a really good movie. I had seen it years ago, but I don't think it gets enough love. It is one of my favorite horror movies of the last 10 years, maybe. Sequestrados. I've not seen that. AKA, in the English version, Kidnapped. That's seen what it? that means in Spanish. No, I, I haven't seen it. You speak Spanish? Yeah, a little bit. I, oh. took, I took classes. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I got an A. Nice. And then, because I attended half of the classes in my senior year, half of the days of school, mm -hmm. even though I had an A in the class, fucking... Mr. Bickmore, Mr. Dickmore, gave me a fucking D. I had Mr. Bickmore for Spanish. He gave, gave me a D because I missed too many days of school, even though I had a fucking uh, A on his class. What he, a fucking Mormon. He, he, he's Mormon. Yeah, he's yeah, Mormon. He, he actually, um, yeah. <laughs> he was summer school principal at Arroyo Grande High School for uh, one summer term, and he suspended me for knocking a dude out. Awesome. Yeah, and but he told me that he didn't want to suspend me. I wonder if he's the one who fucking broke my window and stole my iPod. Probably. 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 He gave me a D even though I had look, look, look. Anyways, fuck Mr. Bickmore. Fuck the fucking iPad. Ah! Okay, we're, we're going to positivity. Positivity. I've had a rough day, folks. I'm sure. sorry. I'm sorry! Okay, so. Sequestrados. 2010. Directed by Miguel Angel Vivas. Out of Spain. Made okay. in Spain. Uh, about things that are happening in Spain. Main language is Spanish. I will tell you guys. Watch this movie. You need to watch this movie. But if you watch it, do not watch the dub version. Watch the one with Spanish and English subtitles. I usually do that anyway. Yeah, it just it takes away because the acting is so fucking good. You know why the acting is so good? Because you can't understand what they're saying. No, no. Because this movie is unlike any other movie I've ever seen. This movie is like an hour, 30, 45 minutes. I can't remember the exact, but there are 12 shots. 12 long takes. Nice. I they, like movies like they that. They rehearsed it for almost a year. Okay. To get it right. These long takes, they do long takes with dual cameras. To where two things are happening at once, simultaneously in different areas, and it's following it for like 10 minutes and stuff. That's cool. It's, it's so amazing. So, 12 long shots without, cu without cuts. You, you gotta watch it without the fucking dub. I hate it. So, starts out with a cold opening. Long shot of a man with a bag on his head, covered in blood, his hands are tied up. You can see the bag moving when he exhales. Uh, I knew I was going to like it at this point, because it's a cold opening. It's this guy laying on the ground with a bag on his head, with blood and shit, breathing for probably 30 seconds to a minute. Nothing happening. It was so good. Nice. He gets up, starts running, gets to his feet, gets hit by a fucking car. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> the person that hit him comes out. He's like, give me the phone. He's like, don't call the police. Let me, let me use your phone. Let me use your phone. Dial this number. His hands are tied. He can't dial it. 
tells him the number. There's like some seises, maybe an ocho in there. Okay. That's what I remember. Um, cinco, cinco, cinco. So it's something like that. Yeah, the cinco, cinco, cinco movie number. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, the daughter answers and says, Dad, they shot mom. Oh. And then it says, Sequestrados, just with the white on black. Nice. Yeah. Then we go to follow a different family. That is not... I, at first, when I first started watching it, I thought it was going to be like a... Uh, in the, They were going to go, and that's current, and then they're going to go past and see how we got here. Okay. Because then it goes to a family, and the guy kind of looks similar. You can't really tell because the other guy had blood all over his face. It is not like that. Okay. So there must be multiple families that this has happened to. Right. That's what I, could, that's what I imagine at the end when I think back about it. So. Okay. Yeah. So that, that we follow a happy family that's moving into a new home, and then they come. I'm not going to give you much on this movie. I do not want to spoil anything for anyone. It is that good. That That's all I'm going to tell you. It is brutal. Amazing graphics. Great, great effects and gore. With no cutaways. Nice. So There's no it, cutaways. It, if they're going to hit you in the head of something, they're going to hit you in the head of something, and you're going to be in that shot for another eight minutes while they're still doing other shit. It's like a death match. It's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of like a death match. Is it, is it CG gore or is it practical gore? Uh, I think it's a mixture. Okay. But the CG, if there is CG, did not bother me whatsoever okay. because I was so captivated by the story. It is awesome. And it can be done right. Yes. Like, terrible movie with a great scene in it, Seed. Where he dismantles the, the baby. chicks. No, when he dismantles, dismantles the chick's head with a hammer. And it's like a three minute scene of him. I don't think I even got that far. Oh, he okay. hit the baby on the on the pole yeah. in the subway. That was pretty great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe there are a couple good scenes. But yeah, no, there's a scene where, like... He's dismantling an uh, old lady's face with a hammer, and they use a combination of dummy with him knocking chunks off of it in CG, and it actually kind of looks real. Yeah. All right, so if you guys like Inside or Funny Games, okay. those are the two movies I could kind of think that have the same vibe. I like Funny Games. Yeah. yeah. You like Inside, Inside, right? I don't think I saw Inside. Dude, what the fuck? Yeah. you got to see Inside. It is... It's got to be in my top five horror movies of all time. Wow. Okay. French film. Yeah. Came out right around the time as Martyrs. French were coming strong for a while there. With Martyrs and then Inside, I love Inside. It came out around the same time as High Tension and all that? Yeah, and High Tension too. That's uh, You can't forget about High Tension. Yeah. yeah. Fucking awesome movies. They, the French were the best horror movie making movie country. <laughs> horror movie making country in a while. Yeah, so. in like the early 2000s they were having Yeah, they were just fucking tearing it up. So, so you guys check it out. Sequestrados, Kidnapped. IMDb gives it 6.5. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to give it the highest rating I've ever gave on the show yet. Eight and a half assholes who break your fucking window and steal your iPad and make you wait for the fucking cops. You have to deal with the fucking insurance agency. And then they get tortured by fucking demonic ghosts. And the level of torture on an 8.5 scale is a lot worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because torture is exponential. Yes. So, 8.5, the highest... Rating I've given a movie on the show yet. I'm going to go home and find that tonight. You have to. It's actually on Netflix. Is it? It is on Netflix, okay. you guys. If you want to check it out, it's not hard to find. Uh, you know, it's on Netflix. You can check it out. Tell me what you think. We like uh, your responses to the show. We're getting a lot of Facebook messages and emails and things like that. And from Doug Jones. <laughs> yeah, from Doug Jones. He just messages us on the hour, every hour. We don't want to respond too quickly, right? Because you know Seems we're like, like that girl who's trying yeah. to, yeah, we're not trying to be desperate. You know, we're trying to play it cool. Yeah, you know? so, we love you, Doug. Just kidding, we love you, dude. <laughs> we love you, Doug. <laughs> okay, what's your good movie? This movie is also one that I had seen before, and is one of my favorite movies. And I actually watched it after I watched The Hollow because I had to get the taste of that piece of shit out of my mouth. <laughs> it's a movie made in two thousand four by Takashi Miike, who made. Uh, Ichi the Killer, Audition, and Audition, and uh, uh, Visitor Q. All the his, his, Visitor Q. I love that movie too. Uh, <laughs> I love Visitor Q. We're, we're going to talk about Visitor Q at some point. We in the have future. to. Yeah, yeah um, I love Visitor Takashi Q. Takashi Miike is actually one of the most prolific directors in Japan. You know, uh, his Masters of Horror is awesome. Do you yeah, see imprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the the crazy old guy who does all the westerns. And he gets yeah. the needles and shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, See that imprint. Yeah. yeah. Mike actually directs a lot of stuff for TV, a lot of stuff for commercials. He does it under pseudonyms so that he can make the money to make his weird ass movies. And uh, Izo is his take on the samurai epic. Izo? Yeah. I never heard of it. Izo. Never. No, I've heard of that. Yeah, I have heard of that. Izo. The uh, the 
uh, IMDb premise it very much simplifies it. An executed samurai takes an existential journey through of time, space, and eternity in search of bloody vengeance. This movie is a goddamn work of art. Really? It starts out with a samurai who is executed for basically the crimes of his master, because they could do that. And he uh, uh, rejects his master as he's dying, and he goes to the afterlife, and he literally has to butcher his way through his own psyche while fucking his inner demons and eventually getting out of his own head and butchering his way through the afterlife and the entire history of human violence to... So it's like hell, or is it like just another plane of, like, purgatory? It's... It's very Japanese. It's sort of like all of that combined. Yeah. But what he's ultimately trying to do is get to the Yama Kings, who are the Japanese pantheon of gods, and slaughter all of them. And they depict them as this, like, corporate board who's watching him as he slaughters his way through the afterlife. That's awesome. I like that. And they send out this uh, Buddhist monk to try and stop him, who's played by Bob Sapp. The the uh, wrestler and MMA guy, big black dude. Oh yeah, yeah, Bob, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. And he's got like a bow staff and like these giant brown ball necklaces around his neck, and he, like, <laughs> he's he's trying to hunt down Izo. And the story's being narrated by this guy who's basically the Japanese equivalent of Tom Waits. Oh, okay. yeah, oh, and, awesome. and he's he's playing he's playing guitar, and he has this like gravelly, screechy voice. So he has uh, a sing along story thing. Yeah. I love that. Have you ever seen Dead and Breakfast? Yes. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Dead the, and Breakfast. The, uh, the very good horror comedy. Rappers. Yeah. Great, yeah. great horror comedy. Yeah. Um, Izo is a work of art. It's very, very long, but there's so much action, and the action gets progressively bloodier and bloodier uh, that you don't even notice that it's almost, it's more than two hours long. Wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, I'll check it out. I love him. Yeah. He, he wanted to make a samurai epic in his style, and goddamn, he did it. I just like you to call him Takashi Mike. Takashi Mike. Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike, how's it going? <laughs> All right. So. And I'm going to give that... I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it the nine. The nine the assholes nine? who break windows, steal iPads... And they fucking make, make you wait for the insurance! For the and you got to wait for the, the fucking cops! And then the goats come, and they channel Satan, and they torture them. I'm giving them nine of those guys. All right. That's pretty strong. That is, that is the new yeah. highest rating. Yeah. You've given out multiple eights. Yeah. I'm only giving out one eight and now an 8.5. Yeah. Now you got a nine. That, that one's a nine. And we're going to, eventually we're going to have a 10. Sometime. But when we have a 10, this is a rule I want to have between me and you. All right. When we have a 10, it must be the first time you've ever seen a movie and it must be a newer movie. Mm-hmm. We're not going to go back and say, hey, I give this movie a 10. Right. We've seen it. We know it's a fucking 10. Yeah, we've seen, I, seen it a thousand times. When we give a 10, I want that 10 to be for something that, if somebody's listening to this shit, and they're wanting to know about a good new horror movie, and we give it a fucking 10, I want them to go get it right away. Right. So, not a 10 to a movie everybody's yeah. fucking seen. Nine's, nine's the highest we can give anything we've already seen. I like that. And I or, think that yeah. actually applies for Ezo, because that's I've probably seen that movie a dozen times. Yeah. And uh, even though it's long, it never gets old. Yeah. All right, so is that all you got to say about Ezo? That's it. All right, I'm going to check it out for sure. It's it's worth it. All right, we have one more little small commercial break, and then we'll be coming back with the top five. De- 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 mask. Mask. De- mask. De- mask. De- mask. De- mask. Masks. The top five masks that aren't Jason, that aren't Leatherface, that aren't Michael Myers, Michael Myers okay. that aren't, that, you know. You know what I mean, folks. All right, we'll be back. March 13th, superstars will collide in San Luis Obispo when Sencal Pro returns to The Graduate. Be there when the Pumpkin Queen, Sage Sin, takes on Wrestling Personified, Rick Luxury, in the final showdown of the tournament to determine the very first Five Cities champion. Join the Sencal Nation and celebrate one year of hard-hitting, chair-splitting, audience-riveting pro wrestling action. All ages are welcome, and the grad will be serving their full house menu during and after the show. For tickets and info, check us out at www.sencalpro.com. All right. We're back, and we're black. I'll do that occasionally. Did you say we're back and we're black? And I said we're back and we're back. Oh, okay. We're both back and back. Yes. Anyways. Yeah, that's back how in black. <laughs> that's how clearly I'm thinking today after no sleep and fucking window breaking. And... Yeah. Anyways, on to something that we like. The top five horror movie masks. Other than Jason, Freddy, Michael Myers. Freddy doesn't wear masks. He's just burned, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there are Freddy masks at the there store. Are. 
So anyways, I'm going to go with number five. I'm, I think I'm... You tell me if you think this qualifies or not. It's not necessarily an iconic mask that's worn the whole time or anything, but that some of mine are not like that. Okay. It's just a scene that it sticks out for me. I'm talking about martyrs. Okay. I'm talking about the skinny girl in the basement with the metal mask that's in her skull. Ooh. You that's know what I'm talking one. about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Coming out of left field. That you know, that is fucking creepy. Other than the girl that they see, you know, which is hurting herself and Everyone, if you if you haven't seen Martyrs, you need to fucking see it. So first time not the American it, version, fuck you. though. Yeah, not the fucking American version. Ah, that pisses me off more than the assholes who break the window. Wow. The American Martyrs. I bet they like the American Martyrs. They probably did. They probably they probably the stole the iPad on there. to sell it for fucking crystal meth and to buy Martyrs. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what I, what it was. Yeah, I it, that stands out to me. I always think about that fucking metal mass that's on her fucking head. And it was pretty shocking when you first saw it. Yeah, like when she it first was. came out with it. And... But you see it a couple times, yeah. and you're kind of just sensitized to it. But it, the first time I saw Martyrs, I was just like, what the fuck? The whole this time. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. So that's my number five. Nice. My number five is from a video game. It's the Terror a Mask video. from Splatterhouse. I've never, I don't even know what you're talking about. So, Splatterhouse was a series of horror video games. It started out on the TurboGrafx-16, and the first one, the first one doesn't count, because the first one was basically just them trying to make a Friday the 13th game without getting the Friday the 13th licensing. And okay. And pretty much just wore a hockey mask. Is it like that fucking move, that game with the bear? You know what I'm talking about? Five Nights at Freddy's? No, no, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, the original ones were side-scrolling adventures where you just walk through the haunted house and beat the shit out of things. And then they rebooted it for Xbox a couple years back uh, and made it like a 360 degree beat em up kind of game. Okay. But the thing that makes the mask awesome is starting in Splatterhouse 2 and then moving forward through all the other Splatterhouse games is it's this ancient artifact that the guy finds and he puts it on and it wakes up basically Lovecraftian entities and he has to go get his girlfriend because they take her away. But So it's the plot of Mask with Jim Carrey. Sort of. Ah! <laughs> Except in the first level, his girlfriend explodes, and he has to fight the monster, and then the rest of it is about him getting revenge. Okay. Um, but the thing about the Mask is it makes him very, very powerful, but it also makes him a magnet for supernatural activity, but he's addicted to the power, and he needs the power because through every sequel, he has a reason that he has to put the Mask back on and like, go after okay. the bad guys. And so the whole thing is basically a metaphor for drug addiction. What does the mask look like, though? It looks original. In starting in Splatterhouse Two, it just looked like a skull. In Splatterhouse Three, it looked like a skull with these like barbs that came off of it and then hooked into the back of his head, uh, H.R. Geiger style. Yeah, like and then in. yeah, as he got more powerful, it started growing these like dreadlocks off the back of it, and they like would be, they would become weapons that you could rip monsters apart with. Okay. Uh, and then in the Splatterhouse Xbox <laughs> game, it had the look with the hooks in the head and the dreadlocks. And when you went into like rampage mode, they would grab things from all around you and rip them apart, and there'd be blood and guts everywhere. You ever played the game The Darkness? Yeah, dude, a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, Mike Patton did the voice for all of the monsters and for the shadows. Mike Patton from uh, Faith No More. Oh, really? In yeah, The yeah. Darkness. Uh, yeah, the the terror mask from uh, from Splatterhouse because it is not only a good supernatural story from a very good gory game, it's also a metaphor for addiction. It's supposed to be the top five horror movie masks, but I'll let it fly. Yeah. It'll fly. It'll fly. It, it sounds pretty cool. I'll check it out. We'll let it fly. Just like my my number five is also kind of, you can debate it. It's not a main focus of the movie. It's not the main character or anything like right. that. Some of my other ones are not the main character. but Okay, number four. You know the Gimp in Pulp Fiction? Yeah. You know what that reminds me of when I saw it the first time? What's that? Daddy. People under the stairs. Ah, yeah. Daddy. Yeah. Yeah. I Man and it. woman in the credits, and she says, Okay, come on, Daddy, get it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's got the fucking gimp suit. Yeah. He's got a big leather mask and everything with the fucking shotgun, chasing little kids that are running around the walls. I love the people <laughs> under the stairs. I think it's so underrated. It's one of Craven's better movies. I, I really like it. Yeah, I think that, and then, uh, why can't I think of it? Um, the Voodoo one. Why can't I think Serpent of the Rainbow? Rainbow? Serpent in the Rainbow. Yeah, those are my two favorite of his movies. And Nightmare on Elm Street one. But yeah, uh, Daddy. Iconic character, you know. And that's why I said it's kind of debatable because he's only in it for like a couple scenes. He's normally out of it. But you let that one fly? I let the video game yeah, fly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We're, it's good. It sticks yeah. out. Um, All right. My number four is The Bunny Man from Donnie Darko. All right. 
because if you not really a horror movie, but definitely terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's, it's, there's it's really hard to define what Donnie Darko is because it's sort of an existential horror movie. Um, but that that bunny mask is so iconic. Like if you've seen the movie and you don't remember anything about it, or you were confused about anything in it and it didn't make any sense, fuck it, it doesn't matter. You remember the bunny mask and why do you wear that stupid bunny suit? I don't know why do you wear that stupid man suit. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Uh, I, and I actually had a friend who, who uh, made the bunny mask uh, out of like paper mache and fabric and glazed it and uh, it looked exactly Frank, like the one right? movie. Frank, right? Yeah, Frank. Yeah. And uh, sold it on, on Etsy for several hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that was your number four, right? Number four, yeah. So my number three, I don't know if you've seen it, but this movie was written and directed by former WCW champion David Arquette. It's called The Tripper. Yes. With the Nixon mask. Ronald Reagan. Reagan mask, yeah. Ronald Reagan yeah. mask. Reagan's coming to kill the hippies at the fucking wood, semi Woodstockish stoner music gathering in the fucking woods. And he always gives Reagan ass quotes. <laughs> and it's so fucking great and mm. it's so off the wall. I love that movie, The Tripper. Yeah, they gave it, David Arquette some money and said, do whatever the fuck you yeah, want. And God damn it, he did. <laughs> he did. And. It's like a point break, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's the point break of horror. Yeah. And I really like it. I Ronald Reagan mass killing people and the things he says and he's got the voice down too. Like yeah. point break, they have the presidential mass. The one guy does the Nixon thing just to be silly. Yeah. But this guy talks like Ronald Reagan the whole time. He is in his mind yeah. Ronald Reagan. I fucking love that movie. Great. Tripper. That's my number three. Alright. My number three is the God Mask from The Perch. The, okay. The uh, the white the guy doll yeah, face mask. It's a black guy with like an afro, right? And he's got a white thing that says God on him. Um, the the black guy had the skull. Oh, okay. Uh, the the white the the God mask. You never actually saw who was behind it. Oh, okay. Um, but it just it stuck out so much. I actually really liked the first two Purge movies. I didn't think I would, and I avoided them for a long time. Number two was way better than number one. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Number one, fuck man. Um, saw it in the theaters. I I love the premise of the Purge. Yeah. It could have been so much fucking better. Well, it looks like the third one's going to go over the top of it. So I fucking hope. A lot of torture in, in the preview. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go see it in the theaters. No, no. I just, I'm not going to waste more money on the fucking purge. Yeah, wait for that to come to your house. Yeah. Um, I, I, like I said, I avoided it for years, and then I went to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights, and they had this whole walkthrough where, like, they take the tram down to the bottom of the hill, and then you walk back up the hill through the purge. And uh, people are coming at you, and they've got axes, and there's explosions happening, and the, the dude in the god mask Sounds is pretty there. Cool. Uh, and and that, that mask just always stuck out in my mind. Like, if you were going to go out and wreak havoc and play god, like, that's kind of what you would feel like on the inside. It was just yeah. very artistically done. All right. Well, is that it about The Purge? Yeah. By number two. I'm going to describe it backwards. For you. Okay. See if you can name the movie before I tell you what it is. Okay. This man, without the mask, in a grand reveal, some, somewhat towards the end, looks like George Costanza. He's got the glasses, the balding head, and it's an ultimate reveal because you do not picture George Costanza when he fucking wears the mask. He likes to listen to... He, he, so, he lives with his grandma or his mom, but he, she's very elderly like a grandma if it's his mom. And he's got... Danzig posters and misfits and all these Slayer, that kind of shit on his walls. But he looks like George Costanza. That's because his name is Machine. Kill the Machine. <laughs> Kill the Machine. Yes. Kill them all. Yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking about now. Machine from yeah. 8mm. Yeah. You're going with the Gimp Mask theme, kind of. Uh, You got two kind of similar yeah. masks, but very different characters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Machine... In the first three quarters of that movie, before he... Well, actually, in the first, almost till the very end, he's the last person to die, I believe, right? Yeah. So, he seems like this ultimate badass. Nothing can hurt him. He's fucking crazy. He's At just the end, a dude. He's fucking George Costanza, bro. Yep. George Costanza. And I love George Costanza, and I love 8 Millimeter. It's a great movie. It's a great, it's a great movie with Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> That's rare. Yeah, there's. A it may be there. the only great movie with Nicolas Cage. I I would argue that even though it's they marketed it poorly, Bad Lieutenant Port of Call is a great movie with Nicolas Cage. Really? The first Bad Lieutenant is good. Yeah. The second. Hey. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> and he's beating off in front of the girl. Watch me. <laughs> the, the second Bad Lieutenant wasn't made to be a Bad Lieutenant movie, but then the studio. I've heard. You know, too. I've never seen it. 
But I've heard good things about that. He's movie. I've heard it's good. Sleep deprived and high on crack for the whole movie. That's the way he always looks. Yeah, and it's perfect for him. His hair's flopping yeah. around like raisin in Arizona, but he's yeah. on crack. <laughs> Hallucinating lizards everywhere. Really? Yeah. It's a, I'll, I, I will check that out. That's, I'm going to check that out. And what was the other one? Uh, that you, uh, Ezo. Yeah. I'm going to check those two movies out before the next podcast. So, so Machine from 8mm. Machine is a <laughs> fucking strong yeah. mass character that's not... that Because I'm, I'm trying to go more obscure, you right. know? I'm not trying to go with things that people would think of when they listen to this top five match. Yeah, that so one came out of left field. I would never have predicted that machine. one. Machine. Yeah. Kill him, Machine. Kill him all. <laughs> you got the money, Lebowski? <laughs> it's the same guy, dude. <laughs> from the Big Lebowski. He's in, and Fargo and everything. Yeah. What's his fucking name? Uh, Peter Stormare. Yeah. Peter Stormare, kill him, kill him, Lebowski. Great actor, great actor. Except great actor. On Prison Break, they had him playing an Italian. I never watched that shit. It was actually, the first couple of seasons weren't that bad, but Peter Stormare playing an Italian with a Swiss accent just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right, what's your number two? Leslie Vernon. Yep. The, uh, the, the mask that Leslie Vernon wears. Uh, he, put, he's in my honorable mentions. I didn't want to put him in because mm-hmm. I thought that he would be a very direct choice. You know okay. what I mean? Well, I mean, Behind the Mask is a great movie. And if you've never seen Behind the Mask, you should see Behind the Mask because it's it's one of the best send-ups of horror movies ever. And the way it goes, too, yeah. it's like half documentary yeah. and half movie. Dude, the, awesome. the thing that I like about Leslie Vernon's mask so much is not just that it's creepy, but that it completely reflects his backstory that he was constructing for himself about being like the, the fucked up little boy and all that. It's very simple, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very simple. I love that movie. The, the, the big eyes and the little nose and mouth and all that. It's, it's very, very well made. And the mask tells the character's story just yeah. as much as the actor does. And then at the end of the movie, Psycho Killer by the Talking Heads. Yeah. With the shit still going on, it's perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect movie. Great movie. Yeah, I, I agree. Leslie Vernon is awesome. He would be at the top of my list. I avoided him, though. Okay. I actually had him as number two, and I, or number three. I had him as number three. I replaced him with Ronald Reagan. Okay. Because I was just like, nah, I, I think Dom might say that. I think other people <laughs> might say that. So I don't want to say it, you know. So. Is that all you got to say about your number two? Yeah. Let's get to number one. My number one, I don't know. We might have a crossover here. Oh, yeah? It would not surprise me if we had a crossover. Dr. Decker from Nightbreed. Button Eyes. That was my number one also. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it would be. Fucking when I, when I came up with this category, I'm like, we're going to have the same number one. Yeah. And it's going to be a crossover. It's going to be the first one. I knew that we would both be number one. Yep. Dr. Fucking Decker, played by David Cronenberg. Ah. And an actor. Yeah, and he nailed so it. So great. He's so, so great. great. When he's wearing the mask and he's talking like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> when he's doing that, that's the creepiest thing I've ever seen on, on in a movie. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was, I mean, they should have just got him to play Scarecrow in the Batman movies, too. Because that's basically what he was. Yeah, he would have been great. And, uh, yeah, and that mask is so great. And, uh, again, it's a mask that's a character in and of itself. Yeah. And that movie, Nightbreed, if you guys haven't seen Nightbreed, you need to fucking see it. I think, I don't know if it's still up on Netflix, but for a while they had the director's cut. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is still is. there, yeah. yeah. Um, apparently Great they're movie. putting a Nightbreed show into production, so that's why, really? they're, that's why they're pushing the director's cut. Wow, yeah. really? Uh, but it's going to be based more on Cabal, which is the short story that Nightbreed is... Yeah, I have it, on, yeah. yeah from, from the Book of Blood. Um, yeah. So they, apparently Night, Night Breeze can push on Netflix because they want to open the floodgates and get people excited for the show. So I'm excited for that. The only problem with Night Breed, to me, the movie, the, the main actor who plays Cabal, mm. I think he's terrible. He's he was pretty Craig Shepard. He's in like Turbulence Part 7 or yeah. something. I just don't think he's good. If you had a better actor playing that role, that might be a perfect movie. Yeah. Everyone else is great. Yeah. The fucking porcupine lady, the guy with the dreads. All fucking great. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, like, I love Clyde Barker, and I love Clyde Barker's stories, and I love Clyde Barker's ideas, but every single movie that Clyde Barker makes is fundamentally flawed in some aspect that keeps it from being a perfect movie. What There's about Hellraiser 1? Always one little thing wrong with it. What's wrong with Hellraiser 1? Um, the boyfriend character with the cig- the guy that puts a cigarette in and out of his mouth. He offsets the mood of that entire movie. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't penalize the whole movie over that much. Bad. You know, it from being perfect. You that, know, that, you know what makes it perfect? The hobo with the fucking worms. Oh yeah, that's makes the hobo's perfect. great. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'd invite that guy to a party for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got hobo with a shotgun last show. Yeah, no, you, you got hobo with some worms <laughs> that turns into a fucking bone dragon yeah. in the fire. Yes. I love Hellraiser one, and I love Nightbreed. That's both of our number one. I knew it would be. 
I knew it had to be. You know, that's why we do this podcast. Yeah. We think different, but sometimes we think a little similar. Kind of come to the same conclusion. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's going to be the best, I mean, it's the best. Yeah. There's no denying it. I have honorable mentions. You have honorable mentions. I do have some honorable mentions. I have seed. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool map. Mm-hmm. The collector. Yeah. So they're kind of they're all kind of similar. A lot of those, even with Doctor Decker, they have this certain look, and it's like, yeah, this is creepy. Yeah. So we're gonna do it over and over again, make it look slightly different. Like, like the little boy in Trick or Treat. Sam yeah. And Sam. That. Yeah, he was on my honorable mentions too. Uh, what else you got? I've got. I've got Dr. Satan's assistant in House of a Thousand Corpses, the dude with the big axe and the gas mask. Yeah. And they yeah. pull the thing out of his mouth and all the goo comes out. That yeah. was a great, I mean, that, that character could have been a slasher for an entire movie and I'd have been interested in it. I have Leslie Vernon, like you said. Yeah. Pyramid Head from the Silent Hill movie. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's I've, a good one. I, I love, I mean, Pyramid Head's great in Silent Hill. Yeah. Like, everything. The doll faces from The Strangers. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, not not so much the guy with the sack over his face because we've already gone over that, but the doll faces were real creepy. Yeah, Chrome Skull. Chrome Skull's good. It's yeah. okay. the The movie's got some great killing scenes. The mask is okay, yeah. but I like the movie. I support anything that Method Man is in. And, and he's in <laughs> so. Last time it was DMX. Now yeah. it's Method Man. <laughs> uh, I actually legitimately support everything that Method Man is in. I was being ironic with DMX. Uh, yeah. Um, Get well soon though, DMX. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the woman mask from Poughkeepsie Tapes, and I still can't find yeah, it. I had that on side door in the basement. The bird. Yeah, I, dude, I want to watch it again just for that. Just yeah. because we talked about it last time. I've been thinking about it when I'm driving for work and stuff. I'm driving, I'm thinking about, I gotta, I gotta know what he says. Yeah. You know? But I haven't done it, so... And the, the woman mask was great in the Kipsy taste because that whole movie, like, that whole subplot is all about Stockholm Syndrome. Mm-hmm. And she puts on the mask, and it's a mask of a human face, but it's almost... No, I'm talking face. about his mask. Oh, no, so, yeah, the, his mask okay, is good, too. Mask. But the, the, the woman mask, I thought, was, was better because it, tell, it tells her story. It's like a bird mask. It's like that mask that they wear. Like, it's like a plague uh, doctor's mask. Yeah, it's got the long nose. Yeah. It's kind of like... Uh, it reminds me of, uh, like, New Orleans. Yeah, Labyrinth or something. Yeah, like that. that kind of stuff. I got two more. You got okay, any more? That's, uh, that's it for me. Okay, so I'm going to go with one that you can disqualify if you want, because it's not really a horror movie, but Little Alex from A Clockwork Orange. Pretty sweet-ass mask. Mm. Pretty terrifying. Yeah. Pretty brutal. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw it in there. I think it's pretty awesome. And then this one was originally my number five till I, I was sitting here in the fucking B-Ward, and I saw the Martyrs poster. I'm like, oh... And I swapped out this one for the Martyrs. But it, it could definitely be my number five. It's the gay pig bear from The Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's banging the guy. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> the yif mask. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. He's got he's a pig and he's a bear. Yeah, yeah. he's a, he's a bear, bear in two different ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Patrick Duffy for a leg. <laughs> Yeah, so those are my honorable mentions. You got any other masks you want to talk about? Nope, that's it for me. All right, next week. I want to talk about Hayabusa. He wore a mask. Yeah, he wore a mask. He'd be my number one. Yeah. (laughs) R.I.P. Hayabusa. So, yeah, we got that. And then next week, we're going to do a different top five. We're going to, we might stick with this top five thing. Yeah. First show was awesome. I really like the top five. So, next week, top five, power tool uses in a movie that aren't a fucking chainsaw yes we're not going to a leather face here and we're not saying an axe we're not saying a sledgehammer we're saying an actual power it has to plug in or be powered by gas that's yeah. the qualifying things and it cannot be a chainsaw that's right so Jason that's what we're going to never used a chainsaw despite what everyone thinks yeah. so <laughs> so you guys if you listen to this podcast and you like this show and you like what we talk about when we do these top fives if you send us a message on facebook or an email or a comment on what, when we talk about what the top five is, I think that in the future we might pick a listener top five and read that as well. Yeah. Whatever one we think is the strongest, you know, if 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 you want to be part of the show, you want to give us your top five, you send it in. We'll say we'll your name. It. We'll say your name. You'll be famous, famous. Also, if you want to suggest a top five, I would. Be yes, fine exactly. That. We'd really like that because we're always thinking about it on the fucking fly. Right. So. All right, well, save us some brain power. Okay, so, you know what we say in closing? As uh, Stephen King once said. Stephen King once said? Yes. Oh. Fuck money, get bitches. Oh, yes, indeed. And if it smells like fish, throw the fucker back. That's right.